Let's begin this video by analyzing Tamir Zumhur's footwork drills, and I hope you learn a few ideas from him. So, at the heart of training lies the concept of resistance. This bounce introduces an element of challenge to his movement, whether it's sprinting across the court or executing swift direction changes. The resistance offered by bounce compares his muscles to work against an additional force, pushing them to adapt and evolve so the results enhance explosive power and agility, crucial attributes for a top-tier tennis player like him. The added resistance promotes, uh, it prompts him to engage the often overlooked stabilizing muscles, fostering a heightened sense of control over his body movement. This new font control translates directly into his on-court performance as his shots become more precise and his movement more fluid. Aha. However, it's not just about raw power. Dumu's training with the wristbands serves a multifaceted purpose. Beyond building physical strength, these bands have a remarkable impact on his coordination and balance. At this part, Kons help Damir work on his explosive acceleration. In tennis, a split second can make the difference between turning a powerful serve or letting a slip past you. But using Kons is essentially creating a track speed challenges. He starts from one cone, explodes to, into action, then aims to reach the next cone on as swiftly as possible. This builds his explosive power ensuring he is always ready to pounce on any opportunity during a match. Cones are like hurdles in, a, in an agility obstacle course. By weavering in and out of them, the mirror sharpens his ability to change direction on a dime. In a game where the ball can come flying from an angle, having that ag agility can mean turning a defensive situation into a winning shot. He is building focus, determination, and that unbreakable spirit that's required on the court. Well, what is a Bosnia man doing here? When he performs excess on the yoga ball, his body is performed to engage multiple muscles groups simultaneously to maintain balance. It's like a full body workout without even lifting weights. This kind of training challenges his core muscles, leg muscles, and even his smaller stabilizers muscles that often get neglected in traditional training methods. The results improve overall stability and better control of his movement on a tennis court. But it's not just about muscles. Using unstable surface like yoga balls or bouncer balls also trains Damir's nervous system to react quickly and efficiently to unexpected shifts in balance. In tennis, as you know, split-second decision can make all the difference and having a finely tuned nervous system can give him that edge in reacting swiftly to his opponent's shots. Mm. Tennis players like any athletes are prone to injuries of their bodies aren't prepared for the demands of this sport. By training on an unstable surface is enhancing the propitiation of his body. In a smaller, in a simple term, he's improving his body's awareness uh, of where it is in a space. This heightened propitiation helps in preventing ankle rolls, knee, knee twist, and other common knee uh, tennis injuries by training his body reacts effectively to sudden changes changes in the mo in movement. And also there is something is cooking here. Uh, you know, training on a stable surface requires focus, concentration, and mental resilience. Imagine trying to balance on a yoga ball while also hitting a uh, lifting sorry a tennis or uh, hitting a tennis ball against the wall or lifting weight it is a mental challenge as much as it's a physical one now it's all about that core strength and stability by strapping some weights while holding the plank position is challenging his muscle in a whole new way it's like a double whammy on his abs and obliques those extra bone bones force his muscles to work harder to maintain that plank which is which in turn helps him to build a rock solid core 
that's essential for his tennis game. And if you thought holding a regular plank was tough, try doing it with weights on your back. He has a hell of diverse kind of routine. First off, there is swimming. The water offers resistance that work wonders on his muscles while being gentle on his joints. Those laps he is clocking, they are like harmonious workout for his workout and lungs, building endurance from head to toe. And so, on to stationary biking. It's a pedal powered powerhouse for his legs and the low impact nature of it, that's his secret weapon against wear and tear. By cycling up a, a storm, he is honing his cardiovascular fitness and leg strength in one fell swap. And there is a treadmill, it's indoor arena that uh, for mastering stamina. Whether he is sprinting or taking a steady jog, that trusty machine is his key for lasting power. Okay, first thing first, Zuma employs um, a semi-western grip for his forehand, a choice shared by many top players. This grip allows for a balanced combination of power and spin, improving him with the versatility in various short situations. Now, let's, take, let's talk about uh, his pre-shot routine. Before each shot, he waits for his opponent's shot while holding his front grip with his left hand. He maintains a, a loose grip on the throat of the racket. This not only helps him to uh, stay prepared, but also ensures a quick transition into his shorts making uh, position. So as the ball approaches, he executes a split step. This uh, little, little hope helps him stay light on his feet and ready to move in any direction. So right after a uh, split step, he initiates uh, the unit turn. During this phase, he moves his racket back, almost in synchronization, synchronization with his uh, opponent's contact with the ball. This ensures that he is in the optimal position to read the ball's trajectory. So uh, what's interesting is that during the unit turn, his, his left hand releases the racket while his left arm stays straight. This straight left arm acts like a guide, helping him track the ball's movement more accurately. Meanwhile, his right arm remains relaxed and slightly bent, with the racket pointing almost straight up towards the sky. As he progresses through uh, the unit turn, he starts to pull his racket back even more, facing the ground. So this is where the racket face comes into play. Um, by creating this lag, he sets himself up for maximum acceleration. You can see, when he actually swings forward. So try to ima uh, imagine loading a spring. Uh, that further you can st you stretch it back. So the more power you can, the more the the more uh, power you can unleash. So try to imagine the spring that you're pushing it back. So now picture this. If you can try, if you can, Zuma's hitting arm is full stretch. His wrist is arced back for the racket lag, and then he launches into his forehand. As he go, his, as he does so. He unleashes the stored energy, generating tremendous racket speed. This is the this is the point where he flips his wrist, imparting top spin to the ball. The top spin not only helps his shots dip inside the court, but also adds uh, that control and consistency in his stroke. Crucially, he makes uh, sure to fully uncoil his body. As he making as he is making contact with the ball, this is the where the power reel comes into play. By engaging his legs, hips, and core, he is able to generate maximum momentum through the shot. This is like a chain reaction, starting from his legs, flowing through his hips, core, and all the way 
to his hitting. The end results are ported forward that blends power, spin, accuracy. About his serve. When he step up to his serve, you will not see he takes uh, his starting position at the baseline. What's interesting is that his angle is uh, his left foot about 45 degrees toward the baseline, while his, while his left, right foot stays almost parallel to it. As he gets ready to initiate the, the serve, he extends his tossing arm upward while holding the ball. This upward motion of, his, of the top swing arm's arm continues as he raises his right arm, entering what's often referred as the trophy position. At, this, at the same time, he is coiling his hips and shoulder, setting himself up for a powerful delivery. One noticeable aspect is how he uses his lower body. He relaxes his legs and starts to generate force by pushing up, uh, by pushing down to on the ground, creating spring-like effect. This stored energy is his energy will contribute to speed and power of his serve. When it comes to actual contact with the ball, he employs more wrist action. As his racket approaches the ball, his wrist pronates helping him to guide the shot. At, the, at this point, his arm fully extended and his extension continues through the point of contact with the ball. Lastly, let's take a closer look at his backhand technique. It's quite interesting how he approaches it. First off, he, he has got um, a specific grip setup going on. I want you to watch carefully here. On his top hand, he's using the eastern grip, while on the bottom hand, it's the continental grip. This combination right uh, might seem a bit unconventional, but it works for him. Good luck. When he's getting ready to script the backhand shot, you can see his meticulous preparation. He's not just standing uh, there waiting for, and for the ball to come to him. He is, no, no, he is actively tracking it, turning his body on and moving towards it. As the ball approaches, he gets his racket into position by dropping and pulling it back. Now, pay attention to his foot up. He steps in with the right leg, setting himself up for a solid foundation. Then he drops drops and pull it back you will notice his racket uh, going to around six o'clock position perpendicular to the ground in the boxing his right arm is fully extended and his left arm is has a slight bend the real power comes into play as he the beat uh, he, as he pivots on the on that front leg this move generates power from the ground up he uses the right, the, his straight arm to guide the racket forward. The magic happens when he accelerates the racket with his bent arm, creating that characteristic uh, racket flip motion. It's a combination of leg power and arm co coordination. Now, here's the cool part. His technique slightly changes depending on whether he's hitting a cross court or down the line. When he goes full cross court, will notice his arc, uh, wrist more. Uh, his adjustment results in a more spin and on the ball. On the other hand, he aims down the line. His shot is further and faster, carrying more space.